All right. So I'll go ahead and introduce myself first. Um, my name's Elaine Sheff. I am the uh, co-director of Green Path Herb School. And um, I'm just here to help out and um, I'll be answering some questions on chat and things like that. Um, but the star of the show tonight is our wonderful uh, Sarah Holden. And I just want to introduce her. She is um, a graduate of Green Path Herb School. And she's also on faculty at the school here. So Sarah teaches uh, botany at the school and she is a gem. We love having her around. Um, I'm gonna read her bio to you all. So she's a mother of two and loves raising her brood in Western Montana with her husband and fellow plant nerd. Her primary focus is with plant medicine she has a background in plant ecology and invasive and native species. In her herbal practice, she empowers clients to take control of their foundational health. Sarah enjoys skiing, lots of hiking, music, and aromatherapy. So with that, we are going to let Sarah take the show here, um, and I will be in the background for anything else that we might need. All right, Miss Sarah, you're muted right now. Okay, hi everyone. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. So hopefully everybody can see that. Okay, so welcome everyone. I'm so excited to be teaching tonight. This is our first series of three free webinars that Green Path Herb School is offering. So please tell your friends um, and share this great educational platform with others because I'm really excited. Green Path is trying new things and really pivoting with these crazy epidemic times. Um, so we have some upcoming classes I just wanted to mention. Um, October 20th, I believe that's a Tuesday at 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. We are going to be um, talking about the menstrual map and Elaine Sheff, our fearless leader and founder, will be sharing and teaching that class in this webinar format as well. And then um, John will be teaching our herbs for your last nerve. And that class, I probably could use some right now, um, but this class I think will be really fun, especially with all the craziness that's going on in all of our lives right now. So lots of opportunities to learn and grow um, through these webinars. And then also, the upcoming programs that we have at the school, we have um, our actual herbal certificate program. That's what I went through. That starts February um, 2021, and it's all online this year. So we'll be teaching um, the same format, just virtually. So that'll be a different um, change for us, but we're all adapting and I'm really excited to see how that will go. And that usually runs February till mid-July. Um, and that's a real cert certificate program. I believe it's over 430 hours. So it's an intensive um, certificate program that you can get. And now anyone in the world essentially can get it. So it's pretty exciting. And then Green Path also offers these other programs. Um, the foundation program, really diving into the basics. So just make sure and check out Green Path Herb School website um, and their Facebook page and Instagram, all the social media options so you can keep up on all the happenings. Okay. So we are going to talk about building our immune system naturally. So when we discuss our immune system, it is really important that we recognize the factors that influence our immunity. Think of it like 
um, like a sundae, if you will. So we have the ice cream and all the toppings. Those are our day-to-day -day lifestyle choices, if you will. And then the cherry on the top, those are our natural tools that we can use in our natural immunity toolbox, if you will, um, to help boost our system. So if you think like the same things in our life that really make us feel vital and happy and connected, even energetic, those things also make our immune cells feel energetic and capable. Did you know that our emotions play a very central role in the functioning of our immune systems? Our mood and that sense of connect have a profound effect on our white blood cells. These are our immune cells, um, our B cells, our T cells, our natural killer cells. The feelings of stress and the social isol isolation that we are experiencing currently are some of the biggest immune downers out there. So things that um, really affect our adrenals like stress, um, when we have um, hormones like adrenaline, stress hormones and, and adrenaline and cortisol, we really weaken our immune function. You may already know this and get this connection, but I think it's really important to talk about right away out of the gate. Um, we have to think about how when we are relaxed and happy, where our cells are producing serotonin and dopamine and relaxin and we have this real strict it has this strengthening effect on your immune system so what are some things that you can do to alleviate or eliminate your stress um, there's many studies showing sick people doing better with various forms of stress relief, right? Maybe that's meditation. Um, healthy plant-based diets can really play into that. There's all sorts of options, just getting out and moving, um, committing to an hour a day of doing something for yourself, self-care. That can really help um, with your stress levels, right? We have so much anxiety in the world today. So um, I, there's this great book, it's called The Unsettling of America by Wendell Berry. And um, there was this kind of quote section that I copied out of there that I thought was really interesting. Um, when we think of our healthcare, what comes to mind? So are you the person that's really proactive in your healthcare? Are you um, doing preventative things? Or are you the type of person that when you get a symptom, you go to the doctor looking for some kind of quick relief? So this fragmented care that we have can be kind of harmful in the long run. And I really like how he talks about this in this quote, be proactive, be an advocate for your health, and you will see changes. I can guarantee it. So wellness, measuring our wellness. What we do in um, our everyday definitely has effects on our wellness, right? Um, but if you think about um, blood pressure, things you can't control, right? Diabetes, um, hereditary things that are like our DNA. Those are very um, important to consider when you're thinking about your immune system. But also, what are you doing um, to measure that wellness? Are you taking blood pressure medications? Are you monitoring your blood pressure? Um, are you monitoring different things that can be helping helping that, that sickness or that ailment, right? And then um, we have different also measures of wellness, I guess, would be like, what's your mood like? What's your stability like? What's your stress levels like? That's definitely wellness as well. And those things, um, you know, you can actually make 
pain is there where you can't so much um, a cardiovascular issue in a short term, right? Those, we're gonna be talking a lot tonight about foundational um, health and wellness. So, um, okay. So if we think like I just was talking, um, things that are beyond our control, right? All of these different family medical history, your, your past, um, your DNA, your hereditary dispositions. Um, but things that we can control are our diet, our exercise habits, our stress level, um, our sleep patterns, okay? So obstacles that impede our wellness in, in today's modern society, you guys, we have these jam packed, like crazy schedules. How many of you have kids that are running off to this and kids that are running here, right? So if we are constantly moving and shaking under these kind of high, fast paced jobs and um, activities, um, it can lead to detriment in our stress levels. So if we look at how much exercise you're getting, right, how much sleep you're getting, what nutrient deficiencies are uh, occurring in your body due to your diet, what about um, your exposure to toxins, okay? So this can be really important when we think about um, our, our health and wellness and our immune systems. So look at what you're bringing into your home and what you're bringing into your body, so to speak, um, that can stress it. So a lot of times the stuff we put on our skin may be toxic and full of all sorts of endocrine disruptors and you know, look, thinking outside the box, almost looking at it like a, a foundational pyramid where you have on the bottom, you have all of your foundation, like diet and exercise, what you're putting in your fuel tank, so important. And then the stress, stress is super important to address. And then your sleep, right? And then how much are you moving? How much are you actually getting out and moving that body? And then what type of toxins do you have? Um, you know, just looking at your cleaning supplies, your candles that you're burning, the Glade plugins that you may be using, all of that can be really um, important to change to help boost that immune system. I once had a client who had for six months been going back to her doctor because she thought she had like severe bronchitis and they had put her on all of these different um, antibiotics. And she finally came to me because a lot of people, when they do finally come to an herbalist, they're very open for a different path. Um, and so we talked about what kind of toxin, toxic load, if you will, her body was taking on. And um, we eliminated, she had a Glade plug-in in pretty much every room of the house. And so we eliminated all of those Glade plug-ins and um, all of the toxic cleaners in her home um, and fragrances. And within three weeks, her bronchial issues completely diminished. So, um, that was really, I think, very eye-opening for her, if you will. So, okay, let's see. And then the last one is dehydration. How many of you can really say that you are hydrated, right? So it's really important um, that we're constantly hydrating our body and working towards um, just keeping our whole system lubricated, if you will, with, with good hydration. So, okay. This is a slide that I made from a conference I attended online. Um, Beverly Rubrick, she spoke and she is a, a research scientist, but she does a lot of science, um, a lot of research into the human body and then also agriculture and soil and how it affects the human, the human system. So 
Um, the soil, if you think about biological terrain, the soil of the body or the like fluid in which all of the cells in your body are living, right? This is your biological terrain. The microbial load of your um, system, okay? And then your body, move that over there. Really important. So I want you to think about, as we move forward in this presentation, um, about how you would rate yourself in some of these areas like um, stress and sleep and gut health and whatnot. Okay, so I'm just moving this my point slider. There we go. So when you think about soil of the body, this is essentially our foundation, right? So important. Um, if the soil is bad, just like in an agricultural or gardening setting, it doesn't support life. And that's just the same in our bodies, okay? If the terrain of the body is sick or deficient of nutrients, you've got a strong toxic load coming in, everything's just congested and not moving well in your system, your cells will not thrive. Okay, very important to remember. Um, and then the greater integrity of the terrain, the healthier your body. So this is really just three things that I want you to just remember going into this um, cold and flu season, if you will, um, and how you can take care of your foundation. If we talk about our gut health, how many of you feel that you have an issue with your gut in some way, shape, or form? So rate yourself on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the worst, um, one being the best, and just write that down. And then at the end of this, I think you'll have a pretty good understanding of where you need to concentrate your efforts to boost your immune system. So gut health is foundational. It's all connected. Um, your gut your brain connected. We have many, many neurotransmitters that connect in our gut and connect to our brain. So oftentimes, if we have a healthy gut flora, we also then have a really great um, mood, if you will. Our emotions are doing pretty well. But a lot of times when you have moodiness, change in your emotions, up and down, bitterness, um, fatigue, you know, you're just kind of at your wit's end, that could be an unhealthy. So you could be having an issue um, with your gut. Now, what would damage a healthy gut? That's going to be something, of course, like poor diet, um, antibiotics, so excessive antibiotic use or recent antibiotic use, okay? Lack of physical activity, and again, poor sleep habits, and stress. So we all have these things and we wonder why our immune systems are so taxed. If you think about people that get shingles, oftentimes this is because immune systems plummet, okay? And then the virus is able to take hold. So really important to think about your gut and how to address that, okay? Okay, oops, sorry, go back. Um, next, I'm just reading from my notes over here. Thanks, guys. So, okay, water is life. Our bodies are over 70% water, and young children and even infants are even more. I think like 85%. So, it's student during our cold and flu season when you're trying to boost your immune system that you're making sure to stay hydrated. A lot of people think they're getting hydrated, but they're not. And it has to do with the quality of your water. So I want you to make sure that you have a safe, reliable drinking source. You can 
figure out a lot of this information, um, there's a website called environmentalworkinggroup.org and they have some different databases where you can actually look up your water by your municipality and see everything that's in it. Unfortunately, a lot of our tap water in the US of A is so toxic and full of chemicals and maybe might be caused to your immune system, right? That toxic load we talked about. So think about if you've got a liver issues or kidney issues, those are 86 and 83% water. So how hydrating are you? Set an alarm. Um, there's all kinds of apps to help you re remember to drink water. I always have a big thing of water with me. Um, so very important. Um, to just think about that water. Are you, are, are you um, shower or need a tap? Those kind of things, okay? Because you can see here that water does a lot for the body. Okay, so who has energy? Who's got stress? Who's got sleep, right? All of these can be caused, lack of energy, lethargic, um, a lot of people in the US of A are deficient in many, many nutrients, especially Missoula. I've had lots of um, medical, we are really low in vitamin D here. Um, I had a client who was severely low in vitamin D um, and was having a lot of anxiety issues. Um, and so when you think about some of your stress or your sleep issues, it could be because, again, we're not fueling the gas tank. We're not giving our soil or our foundation what it needs so it can stay in this balanced state or the state of homeostasis. Um, how many of you have a, a sleep routine? Very important if you want to sleep well that you have a sleep routine, okay? Move forward with something after, like a plan to boost your immune system. Get a sleep plan in place. Get a stress plan in place where you can recognize um, things that cause stress or are triggers for more stress, more anxiety or anxious feelings, okay? What can you do? Meditation, um, there's so many easy ways to do meditation. Meditation, there's free apps for it. You could sit down and do a five minute meditation. How many of you go to bed with your phone? How many of you wake up with your phone? Okay, taking that out of the equation, the evening and the first thing in the morning, taking the phone away, to just let your body awake, um, awaken and maybe get some water, do something that's like a routine, take a morning walk, do a morning stretch, say some morning affirmations that can really help with lessening the stress. Right now, especially, we are all focused on this pandemic and it's kind of like we need to let it go and we need to focus on ourselves and what we can do that's good, you know, and safe and helpful, helpful, if you will, for our family. So many people overall health would improve by making just dietary changes, removing the stress, exercising the proper amount every day and getting adequate sleep. The list goes on and on. However, making these changes isn't always something it's we kind of put it on the back seat right um, I have a family I'm sure many of you have families so that always seems to take the front seat and and we and our health take the back seat so rather than falling short in maintaining good health many people turn to a silver bullet, right? They're hoping they can go to the doctor and get medication. Um, they're doing a vaccine, maybe a flu vaccine every year, but they're still happening to, to get sick. Um, they're just like hoping that maybe this herbal tincture is going to be the, the thing that fixed them, or they just have to take a supplement and they're all better. What I really just wanna get across, I guess, is that it's not that easy. And when we use herbs and even essential oils or natural options, they are not going to work if your 
whole Sunday is not functioning, your little cherry on top will not do that that much for you. So plant medicine works more effectively when it can help support your cellular structure that's already thriving, okay? I hope that makes sense. So um, these are just some things that you can do to cultivate that healthy lifestyle, if you will. Um, regular exercise is really important. How many of you are moving every day or are you in a sedentary lifestyle where you're sitting in front of the computer? And even for our kiddos at home that are home right now, it's really important to get them outside or get them moving during the day and off of, of those tablets, uh, if you will. So as we find ways to incorporate healthy foods into your diet, um, and we decide which exercise model will work best for you. Because again, this is all stuff that you have to find. If you don't like yoga, you're not going to go do a 30 minute session of yoga because myself or another practitioner tells you to, right? It can be as something as just getting out maybe from the whole family and walking on the road for an hour or 20 minutes. Okay. So it really, um, is important for you to find things and tools that you will honestly use. If you don't like herbal teas, then that's not something I'm going to recommend to you. Okay. So, um, think about healthy supplements. We'll talk a little bit about supplementation, but do your research on those. Not all of them are created equal. Um, you can, can get good supplements, lots of great brands, but look for a, a product that's like plant-based ingredients. It's got all your micro and macronutrients. I like um, a supplement that has quercetin in it, CoQ10. Um, a zinc supplement is great to add this time of year. And vitamin C, vitamin D, your B12 complex, vitamin A, all super important when boosting uh, your immune system. So this part, um, that I wanted to include, so among many things that we, what we eat, right, has a really major impact on our health and wellness. So it also affects our weight. And we know that when we get older, weight can be harder to maintain. And then also our vitamins and minerals um, really affect how we feel overall. Um, oftentimes, like I said, vitamin D is one of the big culprits. Magnesium and E, um, all of these are, are just, I think, very indicative of the U.S. diet. I'm not really sure what's going Okay, there. Um, so nutrient requirements are really just determined by the amount of vitamin and minerals needed to minimize that nutrient deficiency in your body, okay? And it can be based on many different things, like your sex, your gender, right? Um, this EAR is the estimated average requirement will allow an individual to compare their nutritional um, intake based on their age and gender. So at 95 to 94% American adults are not reaching their daily requirements for vitamin E and vitamin D, as you can see right there. And nearly half of Americans, or maybe even more, don't fulfill the nutrient requirements for, for the magnesium, vitamin A, calcium, vitamin C. So like right there, um, I think that just shows it's like change your diet or start taking, um, oh, I'm seeing some polls coming through. Are you guys seeing those? Cool. I don't know how to make that go away. Is that on my screen right now? No. Okay. No, don't think so. Okay. So um, what happens when our daily nutrients are not met, right? So we can have more serious um, issues for sure. Like anxiety can really come, come on in droves when you're, when you're nutrient deficient. Um, you can get rickets if you, 
two, our two vitamin D, right? So for those who think that a daily diet doesn't have serious bearing on how our bodies function and feel, it's really important to point out that there are these negative, you know, effects. Um, the nutritional deficiencies, they can lead to worse things. They can make things that you already have going on even worse, right? Um, and it's just depending on the type of deficiency, uh, the body may suffer from a wide range of different issues. So um, when, you're, when you're looking at this overall like health or diet, um, rank yourself here, scale of one to 10 again, 10 being the worst. How is your diet? Are you eating a lot of acidic foods? Are you eating a lot of fast food or processed foods? Okay, those are generally very acidic and very um, lacking nutrients, if you will. So we want to really focus on how we can move forward um, to get our antioxidant support, our energy support, the nutrients that we need, and then make sure that those are safe ingredients, okay? So definitely read lots of labels, do your research, um, I don't want to recommend any specific supplements, but if you want to reach out to me um, at another time, I can give you a whole list of ones that I found, um, and I'm sure Elaine has ideas as well. But definitely just read the, um, the labels. Take it into your doctor. Take it into your naturopath. Have them look it over, okay? So these are good sources of vitamin C, and I just wanted to show you that we have foods out there that we can get um, some supplementation or our nutrients from. And so if supplements is not something you want to look for or use, then you want to be really making sure that you're getting all of your um, serving amounts in your daily requirements for your fruits and your vegetables and your proteins and your fats and all of that, right? Unfortunately, with our commercial agriculture and our large scale ag, um, we have in our farming practices, we have lost a lot of the value that we used to get from our soil. So soils today are not as happy or not as healthy and they don't have all the yummy microbiomes and um, all the goodness in them like they once were in maybe my grandfather's time. So be really cognizant of, of your food intake and what you're getting in each day, okay? So this is just showing like, just making sure um, you understand what you need, making sure that you are always getting an A, a C, a B2, um, where the B12 complex is great, folic acid, a lot of people aren't getting enough folic acid. That's really important. Um, you can look for um, all of these vitamin minerals in many different ways through the supplementation, like I said, or through food by eating the rainbow. These are some really great polyphenols that are great for cellular longevity. And again, these are things that you can take in an herbal supplement. Okay, you can maybe you take turmeric every day in addition to a vitamin and mineral nutrient complex. Um, all of these are, are really great for cellular longevity. So I highly recommend them. Frankincense. Frankincense is an essential oil. Um, it's a resin from the frankincense tree and it is really beneficial to cellular health. So even just by applying frankincense daily, um, you can put it in a diluted roller blend, kind of like something like this. Um, I always dilute my essential oils. I never use them neat because I want to use them long term. Um, but frankincense is really a great one for using daily to support um, cellular health. And there is a ton of studies out there um, that show that. So. Um, this is a recipe, so I don't know if you want to like take a like a screenshot or a picture of this. 
Um, but this is a recipe that I got online um, and I just, it really spoke to me. And so we tried it out and actually it went really well for my kids. They really, they really enjoyed it. Um, but if you basically were looking for when we move, and this has a lot to do um, with a different type of, of thinking, but the Ayurveda way, which we're not talking about today. But if you think about like moving this transition into from, from summer to fall or early winter, oh, that pole, there's another one, yay. Um, okay, got to get that off there. But if you think about um, what you're eating, like hot foods or cold foods or what you're drawn to, like we just made some soup today because it was kind of cold out and it felt like our bodies, I guess, maybe needed to be heat it up, if you will. So carrots and broccoli and kale, those are really rich in, in vitamins and minerals and including those carotenoids, right? Which protect those carotenoids, they protect the mucous membranes um, of your lungs, of your intestines, and really just so important um, during this onslaught, if you will, of the cold and flu season, right? And then kale helps dispel mucus, believe it or not. And shiitake mushrooms, they help to balance our immune response, okay? Garlic. Garlic is amazing anti antimicrobial. So many benefits to garlic. And it has this really pungent, aromatic um, smell to it, if you will. And it's really moving and warming, and it kind of disperses stuff in the body, if you will. Some people will just eat a whole clove um, when they're not feeling well. But if you just get some of these spices and herbs um, into your food and your cooking, that can be really beneficial. Um, nori helps to moisten dryness during um, late autumn and winter, and it really nourishes our kidney yin, which is part of Chinese medicine. Um, it supports the nervous system and the endocrine systems. Um, almonds and seeds nourish um, the yin and moisten the body with healthy fats. And the walnuts and the quinoa and the wild rice nurture the kidneys. So you don't have to use all of these, but just to give you, you know, you can choose different grains. Um, there's so many amazing ancient grains out there that we actually are growing here in Montana. So you can kind of get some locally if you're in Montana. Um, but these are all things, this meal, like it's just chock full of magnesium, vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin K. Um, and it's lots of iron and copper, phosphorus. It's, it's just a really powerhouse. So think about ways that you can incorporate different foods that can also be healing, okay? Use your medicine or your, your food to be your medicine. Okay, next. So else that I wanna stress that we're getting um, before we dive into the herbs is that we're getting enough um, essential fatty acid. Unfortunately, in the American diet, we have way too much omega-6. We do not have a good balance of the three, the six, and the nine. We're just, we're way overboard on the omega-6s. So look for a good supplement like a fish oil or a vegan plant-based option um, that you can use and that will have, that has all the omegas represent, okay? Super important. Um, these essential oils here that I've listed are high in antioxidants and um, are super effective. You can use these topically. You can diffuse them um, and they're, they're really powerful. Okay. So when we think about plants versus big pharma or pharma, so in the Western way or allopathic medicine, right? You go to a doctor and what happens? They diagnose, a symp they diagnose your issue from the symptoms you're having um, usually. And then like, you're like, okay, I've got diarrhea. So they'll say, go home and take some Pepsid or 
you know, they'll give you kind of something to mask that symptom, if you will. Now, Eastern or what I call progressive medicine, herbalism, for instance, we look look at that root cause, look at the whole body, we look at the foundation, we look at the sleep, like I've been talking about, all these different factors as to why you may have that stuffy nose or that sore throat, okay? So when we go to a medical doctor, they're, if they're un, in, uninterested in nutrition because they've never been made to um, go down that path of nutrition, most doctors have no knowledge of nutrition, um, and you have said that you have a 10 for nutrition being horrible, right? Because you rated yourself. You might want to consult a nutritionist. They can help you um, come up with a plan. And it's really important to come up with a plan um, for this whole thing to work big picture and to really build and change your immune system, okay? So our health is just really just this important investment, right? Utilizing plant medicine has been this time-honored tradition and in so many different cultures, and it's really been carried into our modern society, and it's becoming more and more mainstream, if you will. Um, more and more people are turning to natural alternatives, and I just, I just, I think it's so powerful. So, it's really important that you understand the benefits of your plants um, and how they provide this vital, um, how what providing what they're providing is vital to your health, right? So um, think about that before you just jump in a car, head to the doctor for something. What is there something that you can use that's natural? Okay, build up your immune. Um, toolbox or just make a plant medicine toolbox that is like your first aid kit with all your go-tos. Okay, so I got these lists um, online from Chestnut Herb School and I just really liked this list and so again you can copy this. Um, they have it out for free on their website. So I thought it was, um, would be helpful for you to have, whether you take a screenshot of this or not. Um, but these are some of the different herbs that are known as antimicrobial, okay? Very beneficial to our health right now, something you could be using, um, especially this time of year and in the situation we are in. Uh, modern medicine has so much to offer when we're talking about fighting infectious disease and antibiotics and we need antifungals and definitely modern medicine has so much power and so much benefit. But these time-honored traditions and really science-based plant medicine um, can be a great tool and can really work. So trust in them. Um, I'm going to go to this next one. This is more antimicrobial herbs. Okay, we see gar garlic on there, ginger. Ginger is really nice to help get things moving, right? If we think of kind of things that create heat in our body. Cinnamon, I use cinnamon topically in a thieves type blend and I have the, um, oh, my husband was calling, sorry. But I have that recipe at the end I'll share. So these are just a few. Here's some more. Okay, a lot of our cooking herbs are antiviral, antimicrobial. Great, I mean, make up, like I said, a big pot of soup with rosemary and thyme and garlic. Um, you can get a lot of benefit from, from just cooking and spices. Here's some more. Yarrow is one that I like to use. Um, I have that plant as a dried plant, and uh, you want to make sure that you are using the correct plants as well. So when you're researching or purchasing, make sure that you are buying one, if you're buying online from a reputable grower or plant distributor, if you will. Um, we have 
the United Seed or United Plant Savers, and they have a great website and talks about plants that are endangered that we shouldn't be utilizing. Okay, so if you decide that you're you're drawn to artemisia, sage, or wormwood. Um, look into that plant, research it. You can go down to your local herbal store and talk to them about it, and they may have some suggestions. All of these plants, most of them, you can use them in many different ways, which is super powerful. Um, I personally like to consume herbs in a tea form or a tincture form. A lot of people like to just take them in a capsule ground up. Um, you can find all of these in a supplementation type option as well. Okay, so just a little bit more info on, I pulled some of the plants out. So right now, um, this is a great time to collect elderberry. And uh, our native elderberry is called Sambucus um, cerulea. That is our blue elderberry. And um, the, I just actually harvested some this weekend and it's very powerful plant. Um, it's been used for ages. Many of you have heard probably about using elderberry syrup to um, combat cold and flu. Um, I think I even heard about people using it during the cro Corona first time of the coronavirus, but um, it's just really important that you, um, again, know which plant you have uh, if you're harvesting it yourself. If you're buying it from the herb store, then you're going to be safe. But if you're harvesting yourself, um, you want to make sure that you understand that you have the, the correct plant, right? There's all sorts of studies that have been done on this very powerful plant and I've put some here. Um, I do have all of these trusted sources. If you are interested in all of those, I can send you the, the literature cited that I made up. So just one thing to remember, don't use berries from the red elder. Um, they, these are just not something that can be used for medicine. So it's important, again, to know which ones that you're using. And then also, when you're harvesting these, the stems that connect the berry to the plant, they're kind of like in these like little umbels and groupings. You can see their flowers here. Uh, those can be um, toxic, okay? Even like unripe berries can be toxic as well, cause diarrhea. Um, and so you want to make sure that you're just getting all of those little stems off. And um, my friend Dawn, I think that this is probably, I've never tried it and I, I just put my stuff in the freezer, but if you freeze it, I guess it will break off of the stems a lot easier, okay? So, um, I know Elaine on her website, she has, because I remember seeing it there, um, I think it's still on there, but an actual recipe of hers that you can go to the Green Path um, Herb School website and take a copy of that recipe and try that out for yourself. Here's some images. Um, Oregon grape is another good one to use this time of year, and this grows um, pretty abundantly in Montana. Um, you've all, I'm sure, heard of golden seal, um, yarrow. Again, we want to use the white flowered plants for yarrow, not any other colors. Most of the other colors are considered hybrid or ornamental that have probably escaped. Um, so look for the white flower um, of yarrow. St. John's wort is an amazing antimicrobial herb. Um, this has yellow flowers and it grows all over Montana, Idaho. I think it grows pretty well in a lot of places, if you will, but it is considered a noxious weed in Montana. So you want to be really careful um, if you are out collecting, that one, you're doing it sustainably and with your good intention. We don't want to just take all the plants from the woods. But this one is one that I probably would not harvest here locally because of the risk 
associated that it has been treated with a pesticide. So um, this is a cool plant, St. John's wort. They have um, a little like little perforations in the leaves where you can hold the leaf up and you can see the little dots in the leaves, um, which is pretty cool identifying factor, um, but definitely something to just be aware of, okay? So elecampane, this is another one of my favorite um, herbs. It's really warming and it just gets things moving. Um, my pictures aren't the greatest here, but these plants grow really big. And Elaine, this is from seed that you gave me probably three or four years ago from your um, inula plant in your garden. So I was able to plant that and um, it's been growing for several years and it's actually reseeded and more plants are coming up in my garden. So this is a really aromatic root. Um, you can just smell it. It just kind of gets things moving just by smelling that root when you're cutting it up. Um, it's a really nice plant to grow in your herbal garden and definitely one that you should have um, in your toolbox, uh, if you will. Okay, so here, this is our next little uh, list, if you will. So these are immunomodulating um, herbs. And these herbs are traditional tonics and they're for supporting the immune system. Um, they're really like more prolonged, more slow acting. And a lot of people, you know, again, they want that fast, that fast result. With herb, you have to have some patience, okay? Something is, some of them can have immediate effects, but many of them take a while to um, start working and doing what they're supposed to in your system. So um, these have, you know, are just more prolonged than you think of like this immunostimulants, which are a short or a quick. Okay. Um, as tonics, they aren't overly heating and they're not overly stimulating, um, but they match with a wide variety of con constitutions. So meaning lots of different people, different types of constitution, if you will. Um, imagine, or I'm sorry, examine each herb for its traditional usage and then find that constitutional picture that you can bring that remedy out, you know, for yourself or um, whoever maybe if you're working as a practitioner. So therapeutically, these herbs are really used to address like immune, low immunity, low immune resilience. Um, people that have like frequent infections, these are good for. Um, people that have um, like an overactive immune system, like in the case of like autoimmunity or allergies, these can be really nice and helpful. Um, so just when we add these you know, different herbs to our unique kind of constitution in our makeup. It's really amazing what possibilities, you know, can, can occur. So Eleuthero, um, Siberian ginseng, this is one that I love for people to have in their, their medicine cabinet, if you will. Um, it's a lot of these actually too, the ginseng, the holy basil, the licorice. <laughs> Those are all like common herbs that I use a lot. The Eleuthero is really, um, really effective um, as far as having this kind of long-term effect on your body and trauma, or maybe you've had surgery or something has happened. Um, it, it can really be support of, of, of the immune system. Okay. So um, these can be taken on a daily basis. I think there's one more slide. Yeah, there's a few more. Um, they can be taken on a daily basis during fall and winter to really boost that immune system, lessen the chance of, of succumbing to those viral infections. Um, they do have a role in different things. Um, but as far as what we're talking, immunity is, is really important. For, these are all really good for immunity. 
Okay. So licorice, okay, I better, better pick up the pace, I guess. So licorice, um, this is um, a native, we have a native licorice here in Montana. All the farmers always want to get rid of it. So um, find a rancher who's got some wet ground and you'll probably find Glyceriza growing. Um, it's really an underutilized herb, I would say, in Western practice. Um, but it's really nice. I love to give this to my children because they really like the taste. Um, licorice has not been studied well in influenza, but when we were having the SARS, I found this study where they, um, they used an herbal formula containing licorice was dispensed to 3,160 at-risk hospital workers during the SARS epidemic. And none of those that were taking this formula contracted the, the disease compared to the 0.4% among those who did not. I thought that was really interesting. So this could be one that could be helpful. Holy basil comes in all forms. You can use this as a tea, as a tincture, um, as an essential oil. Um, and it's just really powerful. There's been lots of studies done on holy basil. Again, you can utilize this in cooking um, or in a tincture or a tea form. And this is one that's going to just really um, up that immune system as well. Easy one to grow. Astragalus, how many of you have used astragalus? Um, this is a really prominent tr like tr Chinese medicine herb, but it's got um, great anti-inflammatory in, um, effects and antibacterial properties to it. So it's really um, a good immune booster as well. There's lots of studies. Again, there was some studies using this plant um, with the SARS epidemic that we had years ago. Um, and it's really nice when you add it to Angelica as well. So astragalus, reishi, reishi mushroom, very immune boosting, great for your health, cardiovascular. If you just want to have like vitality, lifelong vitality, reishi should definitely be in your repertoire. Um, you can use this in a ground up form, take it in a pill. I actually put ground reishi powder in my soups or in my smoothies. Um, and it's really a nice, nice herb. This is another opportunity to grab a quick recipe. This is an immune boosting bitter recipe and bitters are great to take on a daily basis. They help so much um, on, in so many levels. Again, that could be another talk, but um, this has the angelica root and the astragalus in it. Also some ginger, which is um, one that we saw on our antimicrobial list and honey, honey is really nice to have in there as well. So use this when you wake up, okay? And it just kind of wakes up your whole system and it can be very protecting, okay? Here are our immunostimulants. Okay, these are our things that work pretty quickly. Um, you can get a pretty good result quicker than the immunomodulating herbs. Spilanthes, I like to take that when I'm traveling like on an airplane um, because you have like all that just recirculated air and people in your space. I like to take that before I do travel um, and it's been really helpful. Lichen, a lot of people don't realize that that is a medicinal plant. Um, Baptisia, the wild indigo, it's not just a dye but it's also a very medicinal plant. <clears throat> Great to use during these cold and flu times to help boost our immune systems. Echinacea is one that we all know of. You don't have to take this every day, but if it will help lessen the symptoms. Um, and so, you know, they're not just these pretty flowers. These are easy to grow in your garden and easy to harvest and you can utilize the root. And then um, this is just like an immune blend, just like if you will, like thieves. 
so this is something you can use as a cleaner. You can mix it up and dilute it with a carrier oil and put it in a roller bottle and use that um, and apply that to your feet or anywhere on your on your body. Um, I use it daily with my kiddos and I just roll my roller down the back of their spine. And um, we also use a blend of this with um, vinegar for cleaning. So really helpful to just keep clean and surfaces clean and germs out. Um, I got this from, um, here's another thing, you can take a screenshot or a picture, but I got this from the um, American Herbalist Guild and it's a table talking about specific herbal remedies. Michael Moore is an amazing um, herbalist and he has passed, but he has a great website, the Southwest um, School of Botanical Medicine with a lot of free information there. So, so hopefully you get a picture of this before I go on. And then I think this is last, or getting to the last slide. So this is fire cider. All of you have probably heard of fire cider. If you haven't, just Google it and you'll get about 5,000 different recipes. But basically, we've got a lot of different herbs in here that are going to get things really moving um, in your body. And so this can be really powerful. I have this great book, Fire Cider. There's all these different um, recipes in this um, Rosemary Gladstar book. But here's a recipe if you would like to try this. Um, I got from Mountain Rose Herbs. Um, I'm not sure if Green Path has one, but definitely get on there and check out and see if there's one there. And then here is an elderberry um, recipe. And uh, like I said, Elaine's got hers up on the website as well. So please refer back there. But I like to put um, cinnamon and clove in mine. My kids love that, that flavor. Um, we keep it in the fridge just to make sure that it will last. And um, we take that as we want to boost our immune system. Um, this was just a good resource, but I'm going to skip over that. And so thank you guys so much. I think I have one minute to spare. Um, I just wanted to see if there were any questions that Elaine wasn't able to get answered. Sarah? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, yes, we did have one request. And that was, um, would you be willing to um, put up your Wendell Berry slide one more time, please? Oh, yeah, for sure. Thanks. You got to check that book out. It's so good. Okay. Okay. Sarah's doing that. I am going to um, just put up one more poll. Um, we're interested in what other classes you all might be interested in. So... Here's that poll. Okay, Wendell. Sorry, guys, we're going to have to. Won't let me. There we go. I just love how he said a medical doctor uninterested in nutrition in agriculture, in the wholesomeness of mind and spirit is absurd as a farmer who is uninterested in health. Our fragmentation of this subject cannot be our cure because it is our disease. It's that disconnect. Okay, anything else? Ooh, cool, aromatherapy, medicine making, oh yeah. I think we can handle some of these, Elaine. All right. Excellent. Well, I just want to thank you so much, Sarah, for teaching this class tonight. Um, really appreciate it. And so appreciate your, um, just everything that you've, you've shared and the wonderful recipes and great information on diet and lifestyle and herbs as well. So Thank you so much for that. And I hope you all will join us for um, our, our upcoming classes as well. Yeah. So, 
people. Uh, does anyone have any last questions that we can answer before we go? Good. All right. Well, thank you all so much. I hope you have a wonderful night and we hope to see you next week. Awesome. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks for watching. Interested in learning more? We have lots of herbal articles and recipes online.